Christians. Here's a hard truth you're probably not ready to hear. Your hate-based faith system is literally harmful to modern society, and humanity as a whole would be better off without it. And I'm going to use the actions of its followers, you, to prove it. Today we're diving into a pretty controversial topic, but one that needs to be addressed. These are the top five reasons Christianity is bad for society. Stick around to the end because number one affects us all. Now, before you start sharpening your pitchforks and casting ad hominem attacks, hear me out. This isn't about attacking people of a faith. It's actually about how you, people of faith, are attacking everyone else. So let's get to it. Number five, Christianity's attack on women's rights and personhood. One of the biggest ways your Christianity harms society is by undermining women's rights, authority, and personhood. Look at the overturning of Roe v. Wade. The argument that life begins at conception is used to force women to carry pregnancies to term, no matter the circumstances and whether they believe in your God or not. This is the perfect example of you wanting to put your male Christian boots on the throats of all women, not just Christian women. And here's the thing. Those of you who claim to be pro-life are often the same people supporting capital punishment and wars, showing that your pro-life stance is kind of like a hat that you put on or take off as it suits you. And your influence over politics has set back women's rights and reproductive freedoms for decades. You Christians frame it as protecting life, but let's be real. It's about controlling women and forcing them to live under your religious dogma. Your opposition to birth control and comprehensive sex education further exposes you for the oppressive, misogynist hypocrites that you are. By harming women, that's half a society right there. Number four, the persecution of the LGBTQ plus community. Christianity has long played a role in the systemic discrimination against LGBTQ plus individuals. Your churches and Christian groups continue to oppose equal rights, from lobbying against anti-discrimination laws to pushing harmful conversion therapies. You preach love, yet actively exclude and condemn entire groups of people based on their sexual orientation or gender identity even going as far as threatening medical professionals with prison for helping young people with their gender identity struggles. This isn't just about having different beliefs. It's about you influencing laws and policies that harm LGBTQ plus people. It limits their rights and puts them in very real danger. Christian groups have opposed gay marriage, fought against adoption rights, and lobbied to prevent LGBTQ plus people from even being able to simply exist without persecution. The harm done isn't abstract. It leads to mental health struggles, discrimination, and even violence. Another shameful stain your Christianity puts on our entire society. Number three. Next, and this is a hard one, but we need to talk about how you Christians poison the young minds of your own children with this hate faith. Sunday schools, Bible camps, youth groups, all of these exist to start the indoctrination process early. These children are told that they are born into sin, they are unworthy, that hell awaits those who stray from the path, and that Jesus is the only way to salvation. This kind of indoctrination is mental abuse and creates a culture of fear, guilt, and shame which can be damaging well into adulthood, exampled by the twisted, oppressive, misogynistic nature of many adult Christians. It stifles free thought and critical thinking, and kids are often taught not to question their faith, even when confronted with facts or logic that contradicts biblical teachings. This can trap people in belief systems they didn't consciously choose and make it incredibly hard to break free later in life. This may be a bridge too far for many people, but I feel just like it's illegal for you to physically or sexually abuse your own children. It should also be illegal for you to mentally abuse them by exposing them to these harmful systems of hate and otherism. Number two, the Christian push for religious control of our children. It's bad enough that you want to visit the horror of your God monster upon your own children, but that you have the nerve to want to force it on everyone else's children is just beyond belief. Christian conservatives have long been trying to control what our children are allowed to read and think about. Take, for example, the push to remove books like The Bluest Eye and Gender Queer from school libraries. Even popular works like Harry Potter have been targeted by Christian groups for supposedly promoting witchcraft. But what's really happening here is the Christian desire to shield young minds from diversity, new ideas, and critical thinking. In fact, this faith-based Censorship is part of a two-pronged effort to assault our children and goes hand in hand with your attempts to have Bibles and the Ten Commandments in every classroom. You stifle many voices in one move while forcing your own voice with the other. This kind of exclusionary practice makes young students feel like outsiders if they don't follow the same religion, further dividing and harming society. 
And let's be honest, most of these commandments aren't even relevant to modern life anyway. Thou shalt have no other gods before me has no place in a secular pluralistic society. Thou shalt not kill is immediately nullified by God telling Moses and his people to go kill other people. Bad examples of morality all around. Yet you Christians continue to push your twisted religious values to be embedded into public schools, public educations, not so subtly indoctrinating our children into accepting your beliefs as facts. And now, number one, the push for a full-blown Christian theocracy. Finally, let's talk about the big one, the elephant in the room, the one that affects us all, your blatant attempt to turn the U.S. into a Christian theocracy. Evangelical Christians in particular are exerting massive influence over politics. And it's not just about voting based on personal religious values. You're working to shape laws to reflect your dogma. We've seen this play out in attempts to legislate everything from LGBTQ rights to abortion laws. Christian groups are fighting to impose your beliefs on the entire population, regardless of whether others share those values values and views or not. What's even scarier though is that you've made real progress in these areas. The slow erosion of the wall between church and state means that if you continue, we could be living under laws that reflect your version of morality, ones that restrict personal freedoms, turn our children into mind slaves, oppress minorities and women, and deny science. So, there you have it, my top five reasons why Christianity is bad for society. These issues go beyond personal belief. They impact laws, policies, and the very fabric of our society as this hate faith sticks its evil, gnarled claw in every aspect of our world. If you're still with me, I hope this video has given you something to think about, whether you're a Christian or not. If you agree, let me know in the comments below. Christians, I'm emotionally prepared for your peaceful, loving, forgiving, ad hominem attacks. Please leave them in the comments below as well. Either way, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos where I challenge religious dogma and promote critical thinking. Thank you for watching and see you next time.